at 2D Blur, and I will be your host for the wonderful A Variety Pack. Variety will be performing Octopath Traveler, first chapter completion speedrun. Octopath Traveler is a wonderful RPG game for those who may be unfamiliar, and I am excited to see her go through each ch character's chapter as quickly as possible. Hello, Variety. Are you there? There? Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. All right. Hello there, everyone. My name is A Variety Pack, and I have the honor and privilege of being able to show off Octopath Traveler for you all today. This is one of the most beautiful games that I know of. It sounds beautiful, it looks beautiful, and it serves as one of the more unique RPG speedruns that I'm aware of. We're going to get going as I select a character. There are eight of them, as you might expect from a run called Octopath Traveler. And we're going to begin with Cyrus. So on the count of three, we're going to begin as Cyrus and get ahead. Go ahead and get started. So one, two, three, go. All right. The first thing I would like to praise about Octopath Traveler is that it mercifully lets us skip basically every single cutscene in the entire game. <laughs> All you have to do is hold B, and we can basically avoid every single text box that the game puts in a giant cutscene. Thankfully, we're also given the ability to run, which you can also do by holding B. B is going to be our best friend as we make our way through this run. There are indeed eight travelers, and the goal of this run, as Blur alluded to, is to complete the first chapters of all eight characters. So it might be interesting that we chose Cyrus, who is one of the more interesting characters in these um, in the game and we'll go over as per to the exact reasons as to why that is later down the line first thing you need to know however as we make our way through this run is that we're going to be using cyrus's what's known as his path action basically in and out of battle he has a little thing that he can do and abuse to sort of get information or do whatever he wants in the overworld in this case cyrus's is called scrutinize which lets him sort of uh, extract information from a lot of people. There's a little bit of lore and story that I could go into right now. Basically, we're trying to find a missing book, and we don't exactly know where it went, so we're trying to scrutinize a lot of people. It doesn't really matter. Who cares? What's most important is that scrutinize allows us to actually do some stuff in the overworld as well. You can think of them as sort of HMs from old Pokemon games, if you're familiar with that concept. Basically, it allows us to interact in a different level with different things and find new items that characters may have dropped after their scrutinization. Go ahead and skip this cutscene and Soda. we're basically playing a little bit of Sherlock Holmes here. Trying to figure out who took the book doesn't really matter. We're going to find out that it's in fact this scholar named Russell. But before we go to the dark, damp, dank caves, we're going to scrutinize a whole bunch of people and do a little bit of a shopping trip. So you'll see a little bit of a glowy blue thing there in the left-hand side of the screen. We'll get, well, we're going to pick that up a little bit later. We're also going to do this very interesting thing and scrutinize this uh, defenseless 10-year-old girl to get this little shiny object called a Light Soulstone M. You'll see what it does a little bit later down the line. I'm also going to purchase a Quartz Rod so we have a little bit more attack and defense as we go along. Uh, maybe not defense, attack and elemental attack. Those are two different stats that can be raised. And we're also going to pick up this final little blue spot before we enter. It's a Light Soulstone without the M. This one's a small Light Soulstone. It basically does damage and a light element. We're going to go over the combat as we go through this cave called the Subterranean Study. Now, as this is an RPG, we're going to be getting some random encounters. In the subterranean city, there are, I think, four different encounters that we can get. We're going to hope that we keep getting these little ice lantern things. It doesn't I don't really know what their name is. <laughs> and now we can sort of go into the basics of combat for this particular game. Basically, each enemy is weak to one of the six well, I guess a collection of one of the six uh, physical attacks and one of the six elemental attacks. I'm not going to go through all of them. Basically, trust me when I say that. Ooh, this is actually really good, getting two of them at the same time. We were caught by surprise, which isn't great, but it doesn't really matter. As you can see, 
on the left hand side of this little question mark bar for each of the enemies, you can see that they're weak to swords. We don't necessarily have swords, but part of the fun of this game casually is understanding and uncovering what they are weak to overall. If we use enough of their damage, their weaknesses over time, what we can do is break them and then they will take extra damage. There's four levels of damage that an enemy can take. Resisted damage when they're not broken. Resisted damage when they are broken. Damage, normal damage when they are broken. And then also damage when they are broken and they're also weak to it. It's a little bit confusing. But you'll see on the very left-hand side of each of these enemies that there's a number with a shield. Those are called shield points. Basically, what we want to do is bring those all the way down to zero, because that's when they're going to be taking the most damage. So this is our first boss. This is Russell. He's very big. He's not actually that big in, I think, the game's actual story. But we can sort of think of him as being a big, scary boss, even though he's not actually going to be that difficult. This fight is very scripted. We're going to be using fireballs, because as you can see, the elementals on the left are actually weak to fire, even though Russell is not. Now that they're broken, we're going to use one of our small light soul stones. Which unfortunately did not take out the elemental on all the way on the left, so we're going to have to take a, lose a little bit of time for that reason, but not a huge deal. It just... we're not really in danger of dying so much as we are just losing a little bit of time. Ah, so we've actually uncovered an ice weakness for Russell, so we're going to absolutely make use of that as we go through the rest of this fight. We almost die, but that is totally fine. <laughs> it is very rare that you do die. This fight is actually relatively well scripted. Use a healing grape to heal us ourselves all the way back up. And we're going to use Ice Wind one more time to bring him down to two shield points. Now with our boost points, which you can see in the top right hand side of the screen, those yellow things, we can basically exponentially increase the damage that we do or sort of attack multiple times with our physical attack. In this case, we're going to attack multiple times with our physical attack, our staff, which is a physical weapon that Russell is thankfully very weak to. Do as much damage as humanly possible with our soul stone. Smack him one more time with our staff. And now we should have full boost points, which means we can break him by using a couple of our boost points and we'll actually have three left over. You can use up to three boost points in any given time and we're going to use it to take out the first boss in this game. Of which there are eight for this particular chapter, for this particular category. All right, we have a little bit of lore to go through, but again, thankfully we can skip the cutscenes, so that's not going to be too big of a deal for us. We do have a little bit to go, so Blur, if you have anything, any announcements to say, now is a fantastic time to do so. All right, I'll look over what we have, if anything. Let's see. We do have a $20 donation from... Let's see here, let me get this pulled up. Ernst Block. I hope I'm saying that right. Saying, I appreciate the effort that went into making this event and i think you're all very cool for supporting planned parenthood and that was a 20 dollars donation so thank you very much for that all right so that was our first chapter unfortunately it's not enough to kill the boss of each chapter we actually have to do the story beat that comes after beating the boss because it that's what qualifies as the chapter actually being completed it's a little bit of minutia but that's okay we're going to now, unfortunately, be doing the most RNG heavy thing in this entire run. And that is basically praying that we don't get frogs. <laughs> We're going to be entering a place that is a little bit too high level for us. It's called the Whisperwood. Whistlewood, Whisperwood, one of the two. <laughs> They're very similar sounding. And what we're really going to hope for is any encounter with owls or bugs. Any encounters we get with owls or bugs are going to be exactly what we need to use our light soul stone medium to take out, to basically take out those enemies that we weren't really supposed to be able to be able to. For example, you'll see that we're actually level four right now. 
And thankfully, this game sort of gives us a little bit of a hint as to what level we should be in every given area. And for the Whistlewood, it's level 15, so we definitely should not be here. However, you saw what the soul stones do. So we're, the fact that we have a light soul stone medium is going to mean that our damage output is going to be really, really, really big. So hopefully, uh, we unfortunately got frogs, so. There's a couple things we can do here. The first one, which is the most common outcome, is just we're just gonna die. <laughs> so we're just gonna watch these guys flex on us a little bit, and hopefully they stab us to death, because we would like to retry this again. Very good. So unfortunately, we did get frogs, but it is an RPG speedrun. There's gonna be some RNG that we're gonna have to suffer through. Absolutely I will say, however, correct. while we continue to do this, though, that this is sort of the, one of the most acceptable RPG speedruns that I can think of, this, particularly all first chapters, mostly because it's sort of a microcosm of everything that you can do in an RPG speedrun. More That's frogs, fantastic. Like you might be familiar in terms of Final Fantasy games or Chrono Trigger, etc., where you sort of use end game items on early game encounters and stuff like that to like really get through fights as fast as possible, do fights dangerously under leveled, and you definitely do that in this run, but it is done so in a way that is relatively manageable. It's not too harrowing of a thing to try over and again, over and over again, because it's really not that long. Another downfall of RPG speedruns is that they typically are quite long. They're um, JDQ likes to fill in their dead hours with RPG speedruns because they're so long. Um, this is only 50 minutes about if things go poorly, as they currently are. So. The fact that we can see all of those strategies in a run that is so, I guess, relatively... <laughs> well, I was about to say easy, but we've gotten frogs three times. I'm not going to keep trying this forever. If I do happen to, I'm going to take one more death. And if the next encounter I get does happen to be frogs, I'll just have to do this the slow way instead of getting the, the proper encounter. So one more try, and then we'll... Uh, well, abandoned this particular line of inquiry. You'll notice that I'm continuously getting this chest of money too. Money routing is also very important in RPG speed runnings, speed runnings, speed runs, and we'll definitely need to make use of that as well. Okay, we're just okay. Frogs, fine. I guess we'll deal with it. So yeah, Light Soul Stone Medium completely takes all of them out. Very, very, very powerful. The reason we need a very specific kind of encounter is one of those stats that you saw me get at the very end of that battle. It's called JP, which stands for Job Points. Basically, we need at least 130 Job Points for this particular character, Cyrus, by the end of the run. And unfortunately, since we keep getting unfortunate encounters, we're just going to have to do some normal grinding, which obviously waits a little bit of time. Luckily, as I am a... I will claim to be a speedrunner of this game for the purposes of this marathon, but because I am a speedrunner of this game, I know what all the encounters are weak to, so... I know exactly what uh, spells to use against them to break them and get as much JP as humanly possible. What J job points give you is the option to sort of increase the number of... Great, nice, nice pig. Sort of increase the number of abilities that you do have access to. For example, I currently have Lightning Blast, Ice Wind, and Fireball. But with Scholar's Cyrus class, I can get a lot more skills over time. Even more important than that, actually, is the idea that once I get enough... Okay, we have 93 job points. If we have enough sort of increased skills, you can start to equip support skills, which are sort of like passive bonuses. So first of all, I want to say that the ice areas in this game are lovely. They are so beautiful. It's really what made me fall in love with this game, the ice areas. Second of all, we're going to be going to another character named Ophelia currently, but we're not going to recruit her. We're just sort of going to say hello to her and then move back to our normal city. All right, that was 10 JP. Good. So that should give us enough to get the next thing. So what we're going to get is we're going to get Firestorm. 
And then we have now access to this new support skill, this passive bonus called Evasive Maneuvers. What it is is effectively a repel in Pokemon. It makes it so that you encounter encounters significantly less, which in a run like this is going to be extremely helpful. All right, we've made it to Flames Grace, but we're actually going to do this city last. We're going to go back to Atlas Den, which is Cyrus's hometown, and we're going to do a little bit of looting and perhaps a little bit of nefarious cheating. All right, now equipped with our new evasive maneuvers, we are going to cross our fingers for the rest of the run that we don't get encounters when we don't need to, which is basically never. <laughs> So if we never see another encounter in this run, it'll be fantastic. See, if I didn't have evasive maneuvers, I would have definitely gotten like two of them in that one screen. But because of evasive maneuvers, we are able to get through it pretty enemyless. But of course, it is an RPG speed run. It really all comes down to luck. I was doing a practice run of this earlier today and Almost every single screen that I normally expect to not get an enemy, I got an enemy encounter. And every screen that I typically expect to get an enemy encounter, I did not. So, you know, you can do the best you can in terms of planning, but it really all comes down to luck at the very end. Alright, so this is the city of Tressa, but we're not going to get Tressa quite yet because we need to do a little bit more cheating. We're going to keep going down, hopefully not get in any encounters until the next path. Yeah, unfortunately we did get one. Ooh, that's a Kate. Normally, this is the best encounter you could possibly get. Um, they give you a ton of health, they give you a ton of XP, they give you a ton of JP. Unfortunately, because we already got exactly what we needed JP-wise, this is now effectively useless. So we ran away from the best encounter you could possibly get because it's just not useful for us anymore. Get a little bit of safety money. And to make our way to the town of Ulbrich, which is yet another character we will be recruiting eventually, but not quite yet. Very nice. Yeah, collision in this game is a little bit frisky, but if you do all of your, if you cut all your corners correctly, then you shouldn't run into any encounters on paper. Like I said, it doesn't, you can do your best to plan, <laughs> but your fate is determined by RNG. Cheating. You thought this was a real- what are you talking about, Davo? Real speedruns cheat all the time. None of that glitchless stuff. Only real speedruns on the RAF channel. So you'll see we're in yet another place that is a little bit too high level for us. It's a level 17 area. So what we're going to do is perform something called a step reset. Basically, the way that the game interprets, or I guess, decides if you should get an encounter is how long you've been walking in a particular area. So by moving to a save state, a save station rather, and basically saving and quitting the game, when we reload the game, the game will say, okay, you haven't been walking in this place area. You're now starting at this location. So we can sort of cheese the game into thinking that we have sort of then moving further along than we actually have. There's our first little instance of a slight cheating. Now, I will say, it is possible to get to Stone Guard here without ever having to use a step reset, but it is very risky. And if you die, it loses quite a bit of time. So, for the purposes of the marathon, especially since I lost so many lives to frogs earlier, I will just... Bite the bullet and just do the step reset. <laughs> We're still in a level 17 area, so we need to be a little bit careful.
You thought 17 was bad. We're moving to a level 45 area now. This is West Everhold Pass. And you might be wondering, why are we here if you can't beat anything here? And that's because we just picked up a Light Soulstone L. If a Light Soulstone Medium was able to take out so many enemies, what do you think a Light Soulstone L is capable of doing? Normally, we don't have to do a step reset here, but again, we're going to be a little bit marathon safe and perform yet another step reset. Make sure that we can get into the next area of the game without having to find any encounters that we were not anticipating. And we're going to do so by moving into this little secret area back here and going to the Shrine of the Rune Blade. <laughs> Normally you would pick up the most broken class here called the Rune Blade, but we're not going to focus on that because we're only completing the first eight, the first of the eight, the four chapters for each character. They're very easy, relatively speaking, and we're just going to get an, all we need to actually make that easy. So we're going to pick up $50,000 here, and now we can go all the way back to Tressa. Now, when we recruit new characters, it's not too simple. No, it's not too difficult. All we have to do is just mash A a whole bunch, make sure we get them on our party. The one problem is we need to make sure that we do not say yes to hear the beginning of the tale. If you do, you are stuck in an extremely long, forced playable cutscene that you just have to just do, and you have to reset the checkpoint. And checkpoints in this game are not generous. So it is worth taking the extra half second to make sure that you are clicking the right uh, option on that selection menu. Now, the path to the Cave of Maya is a very long path. So even though we do have evasive maneuvers, I'm expecting to get an encounter here. There it is. Now, here's a little bit of advanced stuff for you. We actually want Tressa to go first, and which is really good that she did. Both Cyrus and Tressa are capable of breaking enemies, but we want Tressa to actually be first because the attack that she uses to break the enemy is slightly faster than Cyrus's. Cyrus would have to use Fireball, and even though that does break the enemy, we want to make sure that Tressa goes first because stabbing the enemy is faster than actually using the Fireball. One more thing about breaking that I probably should have mentioned is the idea that when you break an enemy, you are basically given a free runaway. It's not normally... There's some weird calculation that no one really knows as to when you can run away from encounters. We think it may be like a combination or like an average of your levels on screen. No one really knows. Now that being the case, when we break enemies, when we break all the enemies on screen, then we get a guaranteed free runaway. So here's Mick and Mac, the boss to Tressa's chapter, and we're going to just do a little bit of cheating. <laughs> That's the fight. <laughs> GG. <laughs> and so if you like that, that's basically going to be what the rest of the boss fights look for the rest of this run. And you can see why I sort of like this RPG speedrun more than others that exist. It does use a lot of the things that RPG speedruns are known for, but in a way that is a little bit more manageable. It sort of gives you the gist, I guess you could say, of what an RPG speedrun is. We're going to finish off Tressa's story, as I said, because we must. We simply can't leave the town. We actually have to finish the story. Which is really unfortunate, because as soon as we leave the town to finish the story, guess what we're going to do? We're going to go right back into the town. That is because, in addition to Cyrus's scrutinize ability, which lets you find, you know, items on the ground, etc. Tressa has the ability to purchase items from people. And some of these people hold really useful items. So, for example, on this little woman here, we're going to scrutinize her to find a hidden item. In addition to purchasing her soulstone medium, and the item that she drops is a soulstone L. So you can see where this is going.
now that we're in stone guard that place that we tagged a long time ago we're going to basically just be doing a bit of a shopping spree we picked up a wind stone medium from that npc at the very beginning of the town come up to this merchant here you can tell if it's he's a merchant because he has a feather in his hat and purchase two large soul stones from him. Come down here and purchase yet another large soul stone from this fine fellow. Oh, I guess that wasn't a fellow. <laughs> and then purchase three additional medium soul stones from this final NPC here. So, like I said, I think you can sort of see where this run is headed in terms of our strategies, but you haven't seen everything yet. There's one final thing that we need to uh, consider in our routing. Something that's even more powerful than soul stones. You'll see it soon, I promise. Alright, take Oberk along. Make sure to say no to hear the beginning of the tale. And make our way to the next little side area which I think is called the Mountain Pass, yeah. The Mountain Pass is a place where you should not, on average, get an encounter. But it's still very likely that you do get an encounter. Obviously, we're going to hope that we don't. Crossing my fingers on my controller. Very nice, we did not get an encounter. <laughs> We're gonna have a little bit of a pre-fight before the boss fight with these, I guess they're pirates, kind of. I think they're called brigands, actually. And we're just gonna spit in their face and use a wind soulstone medium. Say goodbye. Mash through a little bit of a text box here and make our way into the place called where they're I guess they're holding a child. The brigands are holding a child hostage. Classic story of a young child who wants to be as strong as their mentor. Gets themselves into trouble. Sounds like a certain Zelda game involving monkeys. Alright. Hello, big pirate man. Or I guess Viking man. We're going to use a large soulstone L. Sorry, thunder soulstone, my bad. He's going to do a little bit of damage to us with his attack. Actually, quite a bit. But we're going to finish him off with a thunder soulstone medium. Basically, that combo of thunder soulstone M and thunder, thunder soulstone L was enough to take out this entire boss fight. Again, we have to skip all these cutscenes because the game doesn't let us just end the chapter. And then we're going to make our way to the next place called Sunshade, which is the place, the home of Primrose, our next Octopath Traveler. Now, before that, we're going to do something that I'm just going to, I'm just going to do in the background and I'll explain it a little bit later. What I can tell you is that we unlocked one of Tressa's um, abilities for her merchant class. But what that ability is, I will keep secret until the very end of the run. Now, typically I don't like sand and desert levels, but this game makes it look so pretty that I am 100% okay looking at all of this. Something I did not mention about scrutinize that I should is that when you're scrutinizing people that are higher level than you, there's actually a percentage chance of it actually working. So for example, you'll see that this has a 60% chance of working, which we did thankfully get. However, if you happen to fail five times in a row, which is, you know, very unlikely, um, what happens is that you basically lose the run. You have to spend money to get your reputation back because you're such a... You're such a nefarious townsperson that the town decides to not trust you anymore. <laughs> and yes, that basically does end your run. <laughs> Again, a very low chance of that happening, but you never know with this game sometimes. 
All right, we're just going to do a little movement, hoping we don't get any encounters. So Blur, if you've got any blurbs or donations to read out, now is a fantastic time. <laughs> of course. Uh, so as of right now, no new donations, but uh, I do want to let everyone know that uh, we do have the bid war still going on. So you may t uh, donate towards the bid war for the run of Ice Dog, Skyward Sword, Save or Slash the Rimlet. Those little grim gremlins that run around Skyloft, you know, attacking you at night. As well as what language will no be said in Happy's run of Say No More, a game I will be hosting for tomorrow night as well, and I know nothing about, but I'm excited to see it. Thanks for updating us. Yeah, so one of the problems with running in this game is that if you fail to run, every single person in your party is just doomed and they can't do anything for the rest of the turn. So we're really hoping that we can escape because I've tried three times and failed three times. Uh, Primrose's being dead is not great either. So please let us run. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, finally. <laughs> that was really not great, <laughs> but that's okay. We have Olives of Life which indeed do restore the health of our dear party members. All right, here's the fight against Helganish. I wish I could tell you that it's very exciting, but it's not really. <laughs> we picked up a lot of soul stones earlier and we're basically just gonna use them all. Start with our light soul stone, which we wanna make sure that we actually use a light soul stone. As you might remember me saying from before, make sure I got the right one. Good. Enemies have four stages of damage, I think, basically, to put it simply. And we want to make sure that we're using the things that he's actually weak to first, because then that will do actually the most damage, even though he's not quite broken yet. So that is the end of Primrose's chapter. We have four down and four more to go. One thing I think this game did immaculately is the water texture in this game. It is so pretty, and I don't understand how we got Scarlet and Violet and Legends Arceus, and this game exists with beautiful water. That's neither here nor there. We're going to make our way to Clearbrook, which is the hometown of Alfin, the apothecary. who in runs where you actually have a lot more party members and a lot higher level, he's absolutely busted, but he's a little bit useless in this particular run. <laughs> Sorry to say, my dear friend. Now, something we're going to do is actually have to swap out one of the characters because we can't have more than four people in the party. Classical menuing knowledge might dictate that you actually want to swap out the bottom character, right? We'd only need four of them. It doesn't really matter. However, that's not quite true in this particular run. You'll note that a lot of the bosses have weaknesses that we're trying to exploit in a given time. And even though we are indeed using a ton of soul stones on these enemies, we do want to make sure that for enemies where we do actually need to break them, that we have the proper tools for it. And there is a boss fight coming up later where Primrose's knives are going to be the actual most, I guess, expedient or beneficial of our weapons, instead of Ulbrich, who uses swords and spears. All right, I would like to see some wide snack hyper happies, but not too happy, because he's not going to survive for very long. <laughs> Hello, big snake. We're going to first demolish you with a shadow soul stone. Next, we're going to use an ice soul stone. And then we're going to get hit with a poison breath. It will do damage, but nothing we need to worry about too much. And then we'll finish off with a fire soul stone. Very nice. That is the end. Well, I shouldn't say the end of the chapter, because as I said before, we actually have to 
go through all of Alfin's very sob story cutscenes. And Alfin has a lot of them for some reason. I, I guess they really want you to feel for him. I think he has the most of any of them. You might think that's the end. We have to take a short rest in this little house. And then we have to, like, skip five more cutscenes. I don't know why they gave him so many cutscenes. All right, now that's the end of Elfin's chapter. <laughs> and we can make our way to Borderfall or Therian's chapter. Now, something that's very important to mention is that we actually have an extra soul stone that we got from Mick and Mac. They just sort of dropped an ice soul stone medium for us to use. That is particularly useful on this path to Borderfall because it's one of those paths that you're just probably guaranteed going to get an encounter. And, you know, running away is so difficult in this game that if you have a way to take out all your enemies very quickly, it's good to have that as a backup. So I'm glad that I can use that ice stone medium if I do happen to get that encounter. Which, you know, I probably will, just given statistics. Although in my practice run today, I did not get it. So it would be even better if I didn't get it. But I'm not holding my breath. Okay, never mind. I guess we did get it. So now we have an extra Ice Soul Stones medium that I can use for something. If I get an errant encounter anywhere else in the run. And we're going to talk to our dear edgy boy, Therian. He's a thief. And we're going to replace him with Elfin. Again, not Primrose, because both Therian and Primrose use knives. And this next boss is weak to knives. So we want to make sure that we have as many knives as possible. Skip a couple cutscenes and then make our way into Ravis Manor. We're going to be doing a step reset in this area, but it's going to be a bit of a unique step reset. It's not a normal one. Normally you would use a save point, but I said before that this game's checkpoint system was not very generous. It's also not very consistent. Simply by entering and exiting a door, you can basically activate a step reset. So we're going to do that. We're going to enter and exit this door, quit the game, and then rely on the game's autosave system to put us right exactly where we were. Meaning that we did actually perform a step reset without needing to use one of those save books as we did before. I see, Gritty Old Ka. Are you perhaps also weak to swords, spears, staves, bows, and dagger? And, uh, what's the last one? And axes? Because if you are, then you would make a very bad Octopath Traveler enemy. Alright, here is Heathcote. He has a little friend with him, but we don't really care about him. Our first order of business is to break Heathcote, who is weak to daggers, bows, and electricity. So we're going to be using those weaknesses against him. Thankfully, Tressa does not only have spears, she also has bows. So we can take that out, and we can break him with Therian's final... Uh, boost point boosted stab attack. Hit him with a lightning blast. And then Primrose will finish off the fight with a fire soulstone large. GG. Alright, now if you were paying very close attention, you might have seen that I actually don't have very many soul stones anymore. Oh no. What am I going to do? Not my main source of damage. Well, you might remember one tiny thing that I did after um, Ulbricht's chapter, which was get one of the abilities that Tressa has access to, and it's called Hired Help. Now, Hired Help is completely broken early game. It's even broken late game, but particularly early game. 
Basically, the more money you spend, the more damage that you deal in area effect to all the enemies on screen. And it's not based, crucially, it is not based on your level. It is fixed damage. So if I spend $30,000, which is the maximum amount, I'm going to be doing that amount of damage regardless of what level I am. And when you're at a very early stage of the game, that becomes absolutely invaluable. As we make our way to Hanit, the Huntress. This is also a trail that you sometimes get an encounter in, even though you do your best not to. So I would like to not get one here because there is a trail coming up that I almost guaranteed I'm going to get an encounter. So nah, we did get one here. Um, this isn't actually too bad. Ooh, never mind. It's pretty bad. Um, yeah, let's just use it. Farewell, enemies. So yeah, that ice stone medium was intended for the path to Borderfall, but because I got super good luck for some reason, I got to avoid having to use it and got to use it there instead. To have enough money for the rest of the run, we're going to be selling a couple things that we got along our journey. And we will now recruit Hanit. Probably my favorite character in the game. Now we can do optimal menuing strats. That is to say, we can now just move upwards on the menu to get to the bottom character. Because we want to make sure that we have, you know, relatively well-leveled characters. This is the Whisper Wood, which is different from the Whistle Wood, which is the place where we got all those frogs earlier. All right, it's almost guaranteed that we get an encounter in this particular route, so I'm not going to be too bummed about it, but hopefully we can still run away from it relatively quickly. This isn't too bad, I think. I think all of these guys are weak to fire except for that guy, so we're going to defend here. We're going to defend here. We're going to have Cyrus use Firestorm to take out, not to take out, but to break some of the enemies. And hopefully we can flee with Tress. Uh, ugh, unfortunate. Please flee. Okay. Well, we might be here for a little bit. <laughs> nice move. Called Nutcracker. Very cool. All right, we su successfully escaped finally. And now we are officially in the Whisperwood, where we're going to face off against Gisarma, which is the boss fight for Hanit, which is basically just a giant rat. So if you've got any rat emotes, you can sort of preempt the appearance of the boss with some rat emotes. And now you will see the power of Hired Health. <laughs> The only downside to Hired Help is that it is indeed expensive to use efficiently, but, you know, we're speedrunners. We know how to game the system a little bit. We're going to do this by giving Tressa an energizing pomegranate, which increases the number of boost points that she has. We're going to hope that Gisarma doesn't kill us. Very good. Go to Merchant Skills, go to Hired Help, go to Veteran Soldier, which is $30,000. And farewell, Rat. Something that I guess I should mention is that enemies actually... Bosses get more difficult. The first chapter bosses get more difficult the more members you have in your party. So, for example, the first fight that we fought against Russell would be more powerful if we had four members in our party. But we only had one in that particular moment. So now, now that we have a full party, this last boss that we're fighting in Ophelia's chapter should be quite difficult, right? Right. You might remember that we tagged this all the way at the very beginning of the run, and that's it's for this reason, so we don't actually have to walk over there. We can sort of just teleport to her and finish off her chapter as fast as possible. Go ahead and say yes. 
replace Hanit. Do not say yes. During my practice run today, I actually said yes to hearing Ophelia's story. And then I reset, and then the checkpoint that it gave me was before Hanit's chapter fight, so I lost a ton of time. Thankfully, I was a little bit smarter this time. Took my time, went a little slow. Words that are forbidden in most speedrun outlets. Are you kidding me? I got an encounter? That is actually wild. Um... I'm actually baffled by that. I don't think I've ever gotten an encounter in this particular route. Like, ever. <laughs> well, that happens, I suppose. Please run. <laughs> Ow. Ow. While we're trying to run away from these guys, uh, may I interject for a donation update? Oh, please do. <laughs> Okay, so yes, we have a donation from Comex. Uh, no message, but $5 was put towards the Irish Gaelic language for what language no will be said in in the run of Happy's uh, uh, Say No run. So uh, yeah, be sure to donate towards the language you would prefer to hear during Happy's run, because as of right now, it will be the Irish Gaelic language. Thank you for the updates. Thankfully, this game gives us sort of a free step reset in the form of a cutscene. We enter this cutscene here, and for some reason, the game just says, oh, yes, you started here. So it gives us a little bit of a freebie there as we make our way to the Guardian, which has the most intimidating name of all the bosses. But uh, we're going to see is not actually going to be that difficult. Hello, Guardian, which is huge and lumbering and has an entire six shield points. Farewell, Guardian, that was massive and lumbering and had six shield points. <laughs> Alright, that's really gonna be it for me. That is Octopath Traveler, all first chapters. <laughs> um, a really nice RPG run if you're looking to get into the craft of it. Gives you sort of a very pri early primer on all the techniques that you're gonna be using in RPG speedruns, be it this game or other games. And yeah, so time's gonna be in three two, one, stop. All right, and that's all first chapters with only four characters in our party. Thank you very much for having me. Which is a weird thing for me to say, but you get it. GG, that was a fantastic run. Thanks very much. Um, I'd like to shout out the Octopath Traveler community, which um, gave me very, very quick answers to all my very many questions about this run, because I do not typically consider myself to be a RPG speedrunner, but that with their help, I was able to answer a lot of questions that I had and make sure that whenever I did perform this at marathons, that I'd be ready to do so. And I hope you agree that I did my job admirably. That'll be it for me. Um, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thank you very much, Variety.